right, we now move on to Thursday night football where the New England Patriots won for the fifth straight game as they beat the Atlanta Falcons 25 nothing last night. The Falcons, meanwhile, fall to four and six. They've now, after being four and four and a surprising uh, four and four, they're now four and six. They've been outscored 68 to three the last uh, two weeks. Uh, for the Patriots, Mac Jones, 22 out of 26, 207 yards, a touchdown interception. Uh, good night to run the football for Damian Harris and Ramondary Stevenson. A receiving touchdown for Nelson Aguilar. Defense had a really big night, as evidenced by the Falcons scoring uh, nothing. Uh, Cal, uh, Cal Van Noy, two sacks and an interception return for a touchdown. You also had interceptions from J.C. Jackson, Devin McCourty, and Adrian Phillips. Matt Ryan did not throw all of those interceptions. He was removed from the game in the second half. He ends up 19-28. 153 yards and two picks. And Russell Gage, his top target on the night, five catches of uh, 49 yards. Uh, Drink, uh, what do you make What do you make of this Thursday night football result from, uh, from either side? Well, from the result, I think the results match what we thought we was going to get. Um, maybe not a goose egg by the Falcons, but listen, they only scored three points last week, so you didn't – we didn't see them coming out here with the whopping 35 either, right? Um, but for New England, um, I think – so, uh, you know, I, I, I really like what New England did. You, you got to think, this team played on Sunday. They dropped 45. They beat <laughs> – I mean, just beat the, the – you know, the, the logo off Cleveland on, on Sunday. They dropped 45. I think they beat them like 45 to 3 or 45 to like 10 or something, something like that, right? Then they turn around on a short week and they play on Thursday. The most dreadful thing that NFL teams do is play on Sunday, then turn around and play on Thursday, right? And I really like what the Patriots did. Like, I felt like when I was watching them, I, I felt what Bill was doing. Like, his thing was, listen, we just played on Thursday. You know, we shown that we're capable of putting up some points. We're playing an inferior team, even though Bill won't say that, but they was playing a clearly inferior team. Then they just played on Sunday. And I think, honestly, he, he didn't press the gas. I, I just felt like this was a very conservative game. I felt like he didn't ask Mac Jones to, to – look, I think Mac Jones threw the ball over 30 yards one time and that was a pick. Like, he, he didn't go crazy in this game. And I don't think he was asked to go crazy in this game. All he was asked to do, you know, what, what a lot of quarterbacks ask, just manage. Just manage. We got a good defense. We get enough on the ground. They can't do anything offensively. And honestly, if the Patriots would have been forcing the issue, I don't think they could have did anything defensively if, if they really pushed the issue. Um, I just think Bill, you know, being the veteran savvy coach he is, he know that they're going into a bye week. He know what just happened on Sunday. He got a young quarterback. He wanted his team to get out about as healthy as he can get them out. So they took their time. I think that's what, that's what resulted in, in the 25 nothing um, final score because the Patriots didn't I – didn't, I don't think they went for the gusto. They just went for enough to win the game. You know, 21 probably was enough for them to win the game, but they ended up with 25. And as you can see, the Falcons just – and look – this is what people got to understand. The Falcons had opportunities. They was inside They was inside the red zone at least three different occasions throughout this game. And they came back with the zippity zip zip zippo. Like, so it wasn't like the Falcons couldn't put points up. They just didn't put points up. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know, man. This is, Listen, <laughs> it's funny. We was talking about this, and you were saying, hey, you know, the, the, the Patriots – the wide receiver core can be worse. And I was like, yes, they could be the Falcons. Because them poor guys out there, I mean, Kyle Pitts is the only dude that people really know. I know Russell Gage played at LSU, so LSU fans probably know who he is, but he hasn't did really much in the NFL. Um, and, the, and the guy, um, Zacharias, or however you say his name, uh, you know, I ain't Joe Buck. I can't roll it out like that. I got you, Alameda Zacchaeus. There Plays college ball at Virginia, so you know I know him. Be respectful. Oh, okay, that's why. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me put a little more respect on that. But um, You've got a great name. Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah. It sounds like it should be in some type of museum. Um, but you know, yo, this this crew, uh, even Kyle Pitts, man, three catches with 29. They, they just, 
it's just not going to get the job done. And they was at home. And I can only imagine what them Falcon fans was looking at when I, while they're watching this on Thursday night, just saying, like, sheesh, what are we doing? Arthur Blank and Arthur Smith. <laughs> and like, what are we doing? You know, so, I mean, long story short, man, it ain't really much to get into. Here's the deal. The Patriots came in here. They had a game plan to shorten the game and control the game. And they did, you know, they did what they needed to do. Like you said, four different interceptions was made by four different players. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, they came to play. Uh, and and to be honest, the context is this. Mac Jones seemed to be as good, a, as good of a rookie quarterback as you can ask for from a rookie quarterback. Atlanta is stuck in the middle of no man's land with a 4-6 record. Um, and we, that, I mean, basically, Bill Belichick put on a master class. I think Josh McDaniels, they, they went out there, the defensive coordinator. I, I just think, you know, the Patriots did what the Patriots do. They controlled the game. They won it on eight terms. And they moving on to the next week, which I think is a bye week. And, and the Falcons, they got to come back and try to figure it out again. But they're not good. Like, they're not a good team, man. That's what we seen last night. Yeah, it's just appeared that um, classic case of two teams who might just be headed in uh, opposite directions. Just quick note on the Patriots bye week. They will play uh, Tennessee uh, next week, and then they'll be at Buffalo, and then they'll go on their bye week. Okay. Uh, okay. But, uh, look, five straight wins, they've – Four, four of them, four of these five wins in blowout fashion. They beat the Jets 54-13. Then you win by three against the Chargers, 24-6 against Carolina, 45-7 against Cleveland, 25-0 against Atlanta. Uh, in a, the, in a, the AFC is interesting in the fact that, you know, it's, it's kind of muddled. Like we're looking at Tennessee now as people think Tennessee is the best team and that this is without Derrick Henry. And I'm, I'm just sorry. I'm just refusing to believe that, like, Tennessee is going to, we're going to see Ryan Tannehill just lead the troops um, into the, into a Super Bowl. I, I just, I'm not, I'm not buying it. Uh, maybe with Derrick Henry, you can get me to, uh, to believe it. But I mean, all these teams are flawed in the AFC, which the point is, I mean, New England's got to be taken seriously right now in that jumble of mess. Uh, we're going to, we're going to find out about them very shortly. They'll get Tennessee and they'll be at Buffalo. Then off the bye week, they'd be at Indianapolis. And then they'll, they'll get Buffalo one more time before they finish up with Jacksonville and Miami. So at the very least, this is going to be a playoff team because you got two games at the end of the season that they should win. Uh, but those four in between, that'll give us a good indication, uh, especially against Buffalo. Those, those are going to be some games worth watching. You know, we th- I think we thought coming into this season based off of last year that Buffalo had kind of – they had a step on New England, had a clear advantage. And I, I don't know, based on what we've seen, look, Buffalo been up and down. Like, they got a great uh, point differential, but they've also had some games where you just scratch your head and you're like, what are y'all doing? I mean, the Jacksonville game comes to mind. Uh, then you have the, 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 the week one loss against Pittsburgh, who we just I don't think we were confident in Pittsburgh in that one. But um, they've, been, they've been a little odd this year. So it's going to be interesting to see how those teams, those two teams stack up in that division, which that's clearly what the division is about, uh, New England and Buffalo. But, you know, last night, I do I do agree. I think they were somewhat conservative. I think Bill Belichick just looked at the game and said, look, this is going to be one of them games where I think we're just going to let the defense take care of it. Uh, we'll just play it relatively safe. Uh, we'll, we'll rely on the run game. We'll be very methodical in what we do. Uh, Mac just uh, protect the ball. He did, minus the one interception. Didn't wind up hurting him. And then you have the Falcons, who the Falcons are a little bit in disarray. This is still a team. This is post Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, the guy who moved up from two to one. Now he's not in the lineup, so you're left with Russell Gage, you're left with uh, Zacchaeus and uh, and Tajay Sharp. You know, I I didn't even know he still existed, but now he's in there running around. No Cordell Patterson last night. That really hurts because now you're left with Mike, the Mike Davises of the world, and Quadri Ellison, another guy that I'd probably have to Google right now. Uh, you know, Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts, definitely their best weapon coming in last night. But I mean, you think about Bill Belichick, what's his calling card generally uh, on defense? He's going to take away your best option. And I think I saw some comments that were quite glowing um, about Kyle Pitts from Bill Belichick before the game. So that I mean, that was just a, a giveaway that like 
Kyle Pitts ain't winning this game tonight. We're going to take him out the game. They did to the tune of three catches, 29 yards. And the overall point is, I mean, this New England Patriots defense is, is for real. It's something, it's, it's a group of guys we got to respect. Uh, they paid a lot of money to a lot of guys in the offseason, a lot of guys on the offensive side. Uh, the biggest acquisition to me looks like Matt Judon. He's up, I think he's at 10 and a half sacks right now. I, I really, just aesthetically, and it's not a it's not a big detail, but I I really like the red sleeves that he wears every week. I just it it makes him stand out. Like, and you think of that, like it's almost like, hey, where's red sleeves? Okay, make sure you block that guy because he's he he's got a lot of sacks. He might be coming to get me. It doesn't seem to be helping him though. Like he's he's playing great, and I think he's living up that contract. Um, that's a guy they got from Baltimore to come over. I think Baltimore's pass rush has suffered a little bit. But I'm um, definitely on the on the defense who you think about in the front seven, especially on that line. They don't, I mean, they're they're not a they're not household names up there. But um in the back end, in a in a modern age where the secondary is key, and you think about a team post Stefan Gilmore, still a lot of talent over there, whether with, with JC Jackson, uh Devin McCourty. I thought Kyle Duggar was impressive last night. Uh Adrian I mean, they, they got a they still got a pretty deep secondary. And uh I really think. For New England in that jumbled mess, who knows? Like if New England's the hottest team in the AFC right now. Um, maybe maybe Tennessee a little bit, but I don't think Tennessee's playing this well. So um that game next week against Tennessee, that's gonna bear watching to see um how these two teams stack up against each other. And for Atlanta, yeah, it's just um they ain't much there. I mean, the uh they was missing some key guys offensively, it definitely hurt them. Uh, they couldn't they couldn't get any kind of run game going. And, uh, you know, you get behind uh, you you get one dimensional. You don't even have your, your requisite weapons out there. And then, you know, you end up with closing the game with four straight interceptions. Uh, I really think, you know, it, it's almost like it may have been like better for Atlanta to just be garbage the entire way and come into this game like uh, two and seven last night, because now it's a case of like, how the hell were we four and four at one point? we got our doors blown off for two straight weeks and it's just like why'd you even like get us excited about this group of guys like they they clearly they clearly are who we thought they were i didn't believe atlanta was going to be any good this year you didn't believe atlanta was going to be good at this year now now i gotta look at like how those guys in the locker room feeling how you feeling arthur oh which one both of them because your team looking kind of blank and you're looking a little bland you got a little pat Shermer feel to you arthur smith so yeah, this was this was a disaster. And I think it's uh it'd be hard to imagine, like even with even if you get Calvin Ridley back, Cordell Patterson, you're at full strength. Like they just they're just not very good. And I just I think Atlanta's gonna continue to slide and they'll be the worst team in that NFC South when it's all said and done.